Boy, these windows really need washing. So here's my usual boring view. And I'm not showing myself, and I'm not reading you another chapter from I Was For Sale just yet. I will try to do it soon. Cold, damp January day. Oh, there's the crow up there. See the crow? Uh, one thing that I keep thinking about, and I hope this makes sense, is that I will be 55 years old this year. And I have lived already through five major recessions on two continents. And I have predicted publicly that this recession will be twice as bad as the Great Depression of the 1930s and will last twice as long. So that means that we've got at least an, uh, another 17 years to go. Uh, this being said, I would love to hear from anybody who can look into the crash of 1920, which was apparently worse than the crash of 1929, and there was no governmental fiddling done, and it was very nasty, but it was over in two years, and everybody forgot about it. I can't seem to find any information on this. Uh, so, if you can help me out with that, I would really appreciate it. Now, a lot of Americans are really acting like wussies right now. Now, I remember seeing in the 80s a lot of stuff warning us that the national debt was a problem, that our children were going to inherit nothing except our debt, if we even had any, there was the Made in the USA campaign, um, and uh, I remember before that a lot of anti-union talk, and I know that there are problems with the unions. It's fascinating stuff to study. But really, I have been through this before, and people just seem to be blindsided right now in the United States, and I really... You know, it's January here in Paris, and the the mood is not great, but that's like really typical for this time of year. Um, and people are a little bit edgy, a little bit uptight, but that's like really typical for this time of year. Um, there's no panic over here. This is Europe. You know, we, we go on and on over here. But Americans in particular seem to be really shocked by what they're going through and dismayed that they haven't planned for things better. And freaking out and getting violent, a lot of them. Now, if you think that the 1970s and the punk thing was great, you didn't live through it the way I did. I come from the Rust Belt in Ohio in the United States. Oh, there's my male lady over there. Oh, she's great. I love her. I gave her a 20 euro tip again this year as usual. Um, it was a really dark time. The oil shock in the early 70s, which was planned, the whole OPEC thing, uh, just really destroyed my father, his business. Um, it was horrible. And by the time I finished high school in 1975, I could see that I had no future, which was a, a punk theme. I mean, you know, a, a few years of, of getting jobs as a dishwasher and an art school model and a parts clerk and working in an amusement park and driving a truck and fixing vending machines and refilling them. Uh, and having paychecks bounce on me was horrible. Really horrible. This was the, the 70s. A lot of us were on amphetamines because we were malnourished. I remember quite a few friends in Ohio were medically malnourished. So this is not a new thing, what's going on with this economic crud. 
and those who forget the past I suppose are doomed to repeat it perhaps and I'm not trying to come on like any kind of smart superior person because I am not and I have made a gazillion mistakes in my life with my relationships and my dealings and all kinds of stuff I am not the sharpest knife in the drawer and I have really had to learn things the hard way but if you think that this recession for example in the United States and over here in France there's really just kind of stagnation that's been going on for decades um, if you think that it's going to be over anytime soon I would say wake up because I really see about 17 years more of this and that's my take on it only, of course, but I do have some training in this. And I'm not just pulling things out of the sky. I think that uh, a lot of people forgot the horrible recession in the United States, which started around 1987 and went until around 1993 and I think that a lot of other people have already forgotten the dot-com bubble which burst in 2000 and let me tell you I haven't had full-time salaried work since then I've had to really scramble since then but I come from a very hard scramble hard scrabble poor white female background and uh, I've, I've always had a hard time. Fortunately, I was generally too dumb to know that, and so I just forged ahead. Sometimes ignorance really is bliss. So, I hope you're all well, and I really appreciate your comments. I'm continuing to post on Daily Motion. I do two channels on YouTube, and uh, next month I'm going to have to decide about uh, cutting down on my computer time. This was a two-year project for me. Before that, I did two years on social networking, and um, now I have a business to build and my health to keep up with, and I'm going to have to make some decisions. But I really enjoyed this. I love hearing from you all. I've made some very good contacts. Um, just remember, um, this has happened before. Oh, somebody just threw a cigarette out there. That's disgusting. Uh, and, you know, for people of my age, born in the 50s, I grew up with people who were born in the 30s. My parents were, and my husband's parents were. Uh, my father was born in 1929, actually. And uh, the stories were horrendous that I heard. Really bad. Really bad. And I wonder if you heard them, too. And I wonder if you heard the warnings in the 80s, which I heard a lot during the yuppie years. And a lot of people just ignored them. And they just didn't want to deal with things. They didn't want to cope with things. And I think that the worst thing we can do is throw our hands up in the air and say, well, you know, we're all screwed, it's all planned, it's the elite, you know. Go and get the elite. You know, learn how to do it. And if you don't have two nickels to rub together, was it you who didn't save for a rainy day? Excuse me? Really? In 2010, a guy who uh, now lives in Atlanta, Georgia, called me Chicken Little. He said that I was being too negative, that I was too much of a, a doomer gal or whatever. And now I think he's in the soup. So think about it, people. Be well. Bye.